enjoy the talk for the world day for the end of fishing. Um, <clears throat> okay, so um, uh, let's start. Well, this is, uh, is a little picture uh, for me. This uh, on the right, you see uh, the action in The Hague that was last year. Um, uh, it was launched uh, with uh, Bite Back. Um, so this was the only infant last year that uh, uh, did something for fishes and I thought it was a bit uh, too less because there are so many victims involved in this industry uh, and not a lot of people knew even about this day so uh, I hope that uh, this is different this year um well i wanted to start with a short video May, probably you have seen it already but i think it explains uh why well what is the problem with fish why don't we relate easily to them and why give we them uh, too less attention until now um Okay. Can you see the move? Don't relate very easily to fish. They're so different from us, they might as well be aliens. It's hard for us to attribute thoughts, emotions, or any kind of inner life to them. For many of us, they might as well be plants or furniture. This is a big problem for fish because our being unable to relate to these creatures as live, conscious beings means that many of us can't even conceive of them having the most basic element of sentience, the ability to feel pain. So we treat them as if they didn't. But fish do feel pain. Scientists have demonstrated this decisively. Fish have the same pain receptors as humans do, and they act just like any animal would when those receptors are activated. In one experiment, zebrafish were given access to two aquariums, one filled with stimuli, the other empty and barren. They consistently chose the enriched one. Then the experimenter injected the fish with painful acid and spiked the water in the barren tank with anesthetic. Then the fish changed their behavior, choosing to inhabit the barren, pain-relieving tank, exactly what you or I or any animal in pain would do. And fish seem to have emotional inner lives beyond mere avoidance of pain. At an aquarium in San Francisco, a giant grouper named Ulysses would lie on his side to allow certain people to pet him. Other people, who he disliked, he would spray with water as they passed. In some ways, fish are even more sentient than we are. Fish have taste buds on the outside of their bodies. They can detect electric currents. Many see more colors than humans can perceive. Others are able to see multiple fields of vision simultaneously. Their sensory lives are rich, complex, and vivid. So if fish feel pain and experience emotions, including fear, what does this mean for the way we kill the fish we eat for dinner? Typically, fish are killed by asphyxiation. It can take hours for them to suffocate to death. As they die, their bodies thrash so violently, they tear their own muscles apart. That's to say nothing of being stabbed in the face and dragged by a hook suffering grotesque decompression injuries as they're dragged to the surface of the water. Tens of billions of fish are killed for food every year, and virtually all of them suffer an excruciating death full of pain and panic. That's an incomprehensible amount of suffering. If we care about the welfare of dogs, cats, cows, and pigs, we should also care about the pain we inflict on fish. There's no logical reason to believe that their suffering counts any less. So I think that uh, was a good uh, summary of what is uh, the problem with fish. But of course, I will uh, tell you something uh, more. Well, let's start with the numbers. Uh, this Sorry. is the most humane way to kill a fish. Stabbing it in the brain and cutting it open to bleed it out. I know it looks gruesome, 
but trust me, it's better than the alternative. For the fish... Sorry about that. Okay, so let's start with the numbers. Well, the numbers are huge. Uh, this number out 2016, we uh, produced and catched 171 million tons of fish. Um, but I think the most saddest part about these numbers is that it's not even about individuals. Um, we just count fish in tons and kilograms, like uh, it's we talk about rice or something. We we have no clue how many animals these are, and they all suffer individually. So what is the problem with fisheries? Well, there are quite a few. Um, the first uh, one is well known: overfishing and bycatch. Uh, also, physical damage to um, to the bottom or to coral reefs. Um, acidification and plastic pollution. Uh, that last one, I don't talk too much about it, but plastic pollution is not um, only about straws, but uh, fishing nets and other fishing gear take a huge part of uh, the plastic in the, our oceans. Uh, I don't remember the exact number, but it's about 46% or something like that. And also, uh, there's a problem with modern slavery. Uh, in the next slides, I will tell you more uh, about these problems. Well, first start with uh, overfishing. Uh, this is a little definition. Um, Overfishing is the removal of a species of fish from a body of water at a rate that species cannot replenish in time, resulting in, uh, in those species either becoming depleted or very underpopulated in that given area. So let's move over uh, to the next slide. Um, they say 29% is overfished. When I first saw this number, I thought it wasn't even that high because I expect it to be higher because you hear so much about it. But then they say 61% is fully fished, which means that we um, fish at a maximum rate that is, well, what they call sustainable. Uh, these numbers uh, that are guarded by the uh, uh, Food and Agriculture, Agriculture Organization are always a bit outdated. So I think it's even safe to say that 90% of our fish stocks are in danger. Uh, in some places in the world, the, the problem is uh, already quite high. Um, it's, the, Biggest problem is in the Mediterranean Sea and the Black Sea. 88% of the uh, fish stock there are overfished. So even governments acknowledge this problem with overfishing, fishing. but um, they think if they manage to uh, cut down on illegal fisheries and uh, cut down on bycatch, well, then maybe they will, uh, then, then it will be enough. But uh, if you think uh, of the ocean as a bank account and we all take money from it, then we can discuss who's to blame, who take too much or something like that. But we are all part of the same problem. Well, the other one is bycatch. Um, well, bycatch is um, every species that is not the target species, or it is the target species, but it is too small. Uh, it is es estimated that 23 to 40% of all the fish we catch is bycatch. 
In the next two slides, I will give you two examples of what package might look like. Well, here is a picture of uh, a vessel and they take the fish on board. Uh, I don't know, does uh, anyone know what the target species here is? Yes, I see some uh, good answers. Um, they're they indeed fishing for shrimp. Um, for warm water shrimps, the bycatch can be as high as 80%, some say even more. Uh, so yeah, that's a horrible amount of fish. Um, another view is this, these are dolphins found, found on the beaches of French. Um, Dolphins are a protected species by the French government, but the government fails to do something about this issue. Uh, sea Shepherd in France is trying to put pressure on the government. They uh, sent out a boat and they tried to make footage uh, that these dolphins get entangled in the nets. They also go out on the street with banners and uh, they usually take some of these dead dolphins also to the streets to uh, make uh, their point. Sometimes they get arrested because, uh, well, these uh, dolphins are protected species and uh, you're not allowed to carry them around. Well, a whole other issue is acidification. Um, the whole ecosystem in the ocean is involved. Between 50 and 70% of our oxygen supplies come from phytoplankton and algae from our oceans. Fishes play their part in the same way as whales do. They take in CO2 and uh, some, of their, uh, some of it they store in their bodies, but they can even uh, bind CO2. Uh, also some fishes and whales uh, fertilize the water near the surface with, with their droppings. So that's good for the phytoplankton to thrive. So if we take away a lot of the fish, while, as we know, our emissions of CO2 rise, the ocean gets more acid. And this is a, a great danger because a lot of uh, living beings in the um, ocean are made uh, from calcium structures like uh, seashells and corals and plankton. Uh, corals face many threats at the moment. Acidification is just one of them. Also the rise of temperature and um, some um, and then some other threats. Um, coral reefs are very important for ocean life. 25% uh, of ocean life is depending on coral reefs. So how do we catch all these uh, fish? There are a lot of ways to catch fish and I will not mention them all in here. Uh, in these slides, I will show you some examples. Um, uh, a well-known way to catch fish is with trawlers. The vessels hunt uh, for schools of fish. Uh, well, the fishes uh, swim for their lives, of course, but uh, they never win. This is a uh, quite exhausting. And when they are pulled out of the water, they uh, suffer from decompression and also their bodies are all pressed together. Uh, so there the suffering already starts. Another method is using gill nets. Um, well, the mesh, um, the mesh size and the place in the water of the nets determine what kind of species you want to catch. Uh, these nets are invisible to fishes, so they swim right into it. So the, their heads get stuck in the net uh, uh, behind their gills. So that's why they're called gill nets. Also with uh, this, this kind of nets, these uh, 
if they um, if they don't use them uh, anymore, they often become ghost nets in the water, and then they still make many victims. Another method is uh, long lines. Um, these are lines with many hooks. Uh, and every hook gets a fish. Uh, this method is usually used for a large uh, species of fish, like uh, cod or tuna. Um, I did watch some footage uh, when uh, they pull these lines in. Well, it's really horrible to watch because there are all big fishes at the end of these lines. and. Um, the big fish they pull in with hooks. They 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 uh, hit uh, the fish with the hook in in their gills to pull them on board. It's a very horrible sight to watch. So I decided not to share it with you. If you want to see it, you can search for yourself on YouTube. Another method that uh, is uh, under discussion is this electric pulse fishing. Um, well, in this picture, it, it explains how uh, how that's done. Um, the big question uh, about this pulse fishing, if it is, uh, if it causes less damage than the traditional bottom trawlers. The true answer about that is that we don't know. Uh, in the Netherlands, uh, we have given far too many licenses to use vessels with, equipped with this kind of gear. And we were supposed to do research. Um, we did, but very, very little. Uh, too little to make any conclusions if it's better or worse than use of bottom trawlers. But the French are uh, angry with us. Um, but I'm not sure uh, if they're mad because uh, it's it costs more damage. Uh, the problem is there is money involved with this because fishing with electric gear gives a very uh, good advantage because uh, you need less fuel. So you can fish longer uh, in the ocean. Well, after all the suffering of catching fish, uh, they are killed. And usually fish that are catched um, in, the, in the ocean, they, they don't get stunned. So uh, usually they suffocate to death and this takes quite a while. Uh, for some species, this can be like 30 minutes. And I uh, even know some species that can take hours till they're dead. Um, a lot of fish uh, also get uh, cutted with uh, with a jail cut, uh, uh, so that they uh, bleed to death, uh, or they're uh, gutted alive. One thing. Uh, that is a little bit of a horrible fact to know. They decapitated eels and they measured brain function after 30 minutes uh, of decapitation. So, well, this doesn't actually mean that they were still conscious at that moment, but nobody really knows how long it takes before they lose their consciousness because the function of the, the, the brains um don't die immediately well not only fish suffer from the fishing industry um also uh, for some people this can be uh, very yeah. horrible uh, the yeah. film shows you some something about that
the agent said he could find me a better job at a factory, but he put me on a fishing boat. found out about that I thought that uh, was really horrible I uh, I didn't know this uh, until recently uh, Greenpeace has a campaign now against transshipment uh, transshipment means fish vessels stay at sea uh, and other boats come over to take the catch to the shore uh, well, that way of working can facilitate illegal, unreported and unregulated fishing and also uh, can support these kind of practices. So, how about aquaculture? Uh, is that a solution? Well, first, I show you some of the types of, that you have uh, in aquaculture. Not all of them are that bad for the environment. Um, the thing you hear most about are about the half open ponds and the open net pens. Uh, these are the most uh, dangerous for the environment. Uh, I'll tell more about it uh, in a moment. There are also uh, raceways, like they call them, and recirculating tanks. These are closed systems. So uh, dirty water cannot uh, go into the environment and everything they use in there. Um, and also fish uh, can hardly escape. Um, so for the environment, that is an um, improvement. Uh, I doubt if it, it's for the fish, but... Um, and there are also uh, types of aquaculture that are not uh, that bad. Uh, uh, for example, you can also farm seaweed. So what is the problem with aquaculture and the environment? Well, there are, is a lot of danger, uh, especially with uh, open, uh, open net uh, pens and uh, half open ponds. Uh, the first problem is farmed fish are fed wild fish. So uh it's really a question is it's really a, an efficient solution of course they make improvements to uh give the fish more plant-based diets um but it's still not really efficient also not every species can be um uh, uh, raised from egg till an adult uh, within a hatchery. So they also take eggs and fry uh, from the wild. In the Netherlands, that's done for eels. Uh, we take fry from the coast of Spain and then uh, we, we farm them here in our recirculating tanks. In some cases, uh, fish farms produce high methane emissions. Uh, in some cases, this can be as high as in uh, dairy farms. Well, 
the other uh, problems are the use of chemicals and antibiotics. Um, if you use it in open structures, these uh, chemicals can leak into the environment. And uh, a lot of fish farms are located in mangrove areas. Mangrove areas are very rich of algae and weeds uh, that provide uh, a lot of oxygen uh, for, for us, for the ecosystem. Uh, and of course they disappear when you put a fish farm in there. And another problem is that fish escape. Um, and that's a problem on itself because when the fish escape, they are competition of food and habitat uh, for, with the wildlife species. Um, but there is also an impact of biodiversity. Uh, farmed fish have lower genetic variation. When we hatch fish, we breed all the eggs and there's no natural selection. We do make selections concerning the quality or the size of the fish but the genetic variation is low and when these escaped fish breed with wild populations this is serious threat. Uh, there is a documentary uh, uh, about uh, what can happen and it's called artificial. Uh, this happened in um, the United States. They tried to uh, get more salmon in their rivers but uh, and they wanted to do that with hatcheries. Uh, but the whole population uh, in the wild almost got extinct. Also, uh, species can be invasive in the places where they escape, uh, for example, in Lake Apoyo in Nicaragua. And of course, uh, the fish that were um, present and they, they have usually diseases or they're treated with antibiotics. And, uh, they can and they can take the, uh, the wild as well. Uh, another thing is the treatments in fish farm uh, for fish. Um, we use lump fish uh, for removing sea lice from salmon. Uh, we talk about 50 to 60 million of lump fish uh, that are in um, the fish farms in Norway. Uh, they live very short and they all die. Um, and uh, 20 million of these fishes that they use, they take uh, them from the wild. Um, another solution to get rid of the uh, uh, lice is uh, to put some in warm water. But that's uh, kind of painful for the fish, of course. Um, another treatment uh, you can find with shrimps or other crustaceans. Uh, they do this procedure, eye soak ablation, uh, which means they um, squeeze or cut or remove uh, the eye stalks. And this is done because uh, then um, they uh, produce, uh, this procedure is done to induce ovarian maturation in captivity. So they um, produce sooner uh, shrimp, uh, new shrimps. Uh, another treatment for eels, uh, they are immersed in salt or ammonia. Luckily, nowadays, they need to get stunned first, but that wasn't the case until recently. So, uh, how about fish welfare uh, in aquaculture? Um, well, at this time, there are no regulations at the moment for fishes. Uh, this figure is taken from a paper published by uh, last year by the Food and Agriculture Organization because they want to improve on fish welfare in fish farms. Uh, they expect people will demand better treatments uh, for fish and they all are also concerned that uh, um, if, you, if fish have better welfare 
uh, then they might even have better products. Um, but they struggle. I think with... someone had a direct point to this. Someone raised their hand. Uh, mm -hmm. Joffrey. Hey guys, 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 Hello, 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 hello. <laughs> Maybe use the chat and um <laughs> violent communication say something. Yeah, there's some more questions about uh, methane uh, problem, but we can maybe get back to it um, at the end of the talk. Yes. So elaborate maybe. a little bit on the methane from yes. fish. So, yeah. Um, okay, so someone cannot read uh, the chart. Well, it's a very big uh, chart on the screen. Uh, it basically uh, gives an out and a short guide of how um, uh, fish farms can approach fish welfare. And um, it, because the biggest problem is that uh, there is not a real good definition of um, fish welfare. Uh, you can minimize this to that fish uh, don't have uh, um, parasites or that they are not ill and that they're healthy. Um, that's something they would, uh, would like to have, of course. Uh, but uh, others say that you need to take uh, in account that fish should be able to show some natural behavior and that's of course a bit uh, bit more difficult um, especially in these uh, crowded tanks uh, so uh, and there's also not a monitoring system uh, and there is lack of uh, knowledge in the first place. So they basically just started to think about um, this problem. And this this figure sh here shows just a little guide how they can approach uh, fish welfare. Uh, one of the things they think about is about stunning fish. Someone had a question um, where the diagram was from. Like, uh, what's it's the source of. Oh, OK. Uh, well, it, it, that is mentioned uh, next to it. It's uh, a paper from the Welfare of Fishes in Aquaculture by the European Inland Fisheries and Aquaculture Advisory Commission. And this commission is a part of the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. Um, okay. So one of the things they um, uh, think about is uh, about stunning fish because European Union law requires that fish shall be spared any avoidable pain, distress or suffering during their killing and related operations. Uh, this is also uh, true for fish, uh, they, they need to think about this. 
Um, the organization Compassion in World Farming did a research on uh, how fish can be stunned or how that is done nowadays. Uh, and they say these uh, methods can be potentially humane uh, as far as slaughter can be at all. Uh, but with all uh, these methods, it's very important that it's done very uh, accurate um, because it needs to damage the brain within a second. That's the, that's the goal. But in all cases, that is quite a challenge. Um, uh, in this uh, screen, you see uh, an example of spiking. So they, you have to be very precise and uh, sometimes it's done uh, manually, uh, but the fish has to die good in place and you really need to hit the right spot. Uh, so the chances that uh, this is not always done uh, as well, uh, the chances are quite high. Um, there is also uh, a way of give fish a percussive blow. So you hit them hard with uh, uh, pressed air. So the brain that uh, gets uh, damaged. Uh, this can be done automatically, but also then uh, fish need to lay in the right uh, direction uh, and get the, the, the stun on their heads. Um, the, mo the, st the stunning method you hear mostly about is that of electrical stunning. Also, in this uh, procedure, fish need to be taken out of the water. Uh, they have to lie flat and still in the right direction. Um, and realize that uh, to know uh, how effective this is, you need a lot of experiments. You need to know how many volts you need to use and how long uh, you you have to put the electrician on the fish and if you do need to repeat this and how long it takes before they recover and get gain their consciousness back. So that's quite a lot of experiments and you need to do this for every fish species. Um, uh, because you should take care that fish get killed before they get their conscience back. So uh, this is uh, my talk so far. Um, I hope uh, you learned a little and um, I hope this inspires you to speak up more for fishes. Uh, in a while we will talk more about um, what we can do, um, but first, um, there's a little time to answer some questions. Yes, so the first question was if you could elaborate a little more about the methane um, situation of fish. You mentioned yeah, the methane I... of fish was like comparable with dairy. Um, what does, does that exact work? Um, well, somebody already responded to that. I saw it uh, because of the uh, droppings of the fish. Um, it's not uh, in every case as bad uh, as in uh, they they, com they compared how many uh, methane is produced for a kilogram of fish uh, comparing to a kilogram of uh, a dairy cow. And in some cases, uh, it was uh, uh, the same level, uh, but it depends on the fish species. Let me see. Um, 
Yeah, so I want to repeat what um, that person said. He said it's because of the, um, the poop of the fish, mm -hmm. which sinks to the bottom and then creates an anaerobic. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically without oxygen, an environment without oxygen, uh, which then creates met methane. Yes. Um, let me see if there are other questions. I think um, we have a lot of resources in the chat as well, which will be shared afterwards. But I think those were the questions I can see in the chat. Yes. Um, somebody asked if they missed the talk. We just finished indeed. Um, but okay. we will have an, uh, a discussion about how to take action for fish. Um, so, you're always welcome to stay for that. Um, if there are, if there's someone with another, wait, was there any, was there any spike in empathy with fish after finding Nemo, after there was, for example, with pigs after Babe? Uh, well, uh, I have uh, read uh, about people that uh, that that. that were influenced influenced uh, by uh, the movie, but I don't have exact numbers about that. Well, I think uh, the, the last questions about what uh, actions we can do, I think we are going to discuss that in a moment. Uh, Larissa is also uh, here and she will give a little introduction to that and then we can uh, say uh, all say something about that. Um, are there any more questions? Um, let's see, politicians are so different. Things have been done. Um, maybe if somebody has a question, um, you can just speak up from now instead of using the chat because there's a lot of information being shared in the chat as well and it's kind of difficult to um, see the difference. It will, it will take more time for me to read and then point out as to just speak up. So if you have a question, just ask. Okay, two hands were raised. by, I, I can see by Joffrey and by Inas. Okay, maybe you should choose the chat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know. Yes. Yeah, all right, hello guys. Oh, well, that's, uh, that's my that. hand wasn't raised again. I think it's, uh, it's still from the last time I raised it. To uh, oh, okay. doubt there was a... Uh, a bit uh, of more uh, info needed about the maintain uh, question. So, yeah. okay. hands raised. Okay. <laughs> so then it's uh, Ines, Ines. Um. Yes, hello, this is Ines. Can you hear me? Yes, we yes. hear you. Great, hello everyone. Uh, I have one question. Um, so, uh, we are seeing that politicians are not taking animal welfare in general seriously, let alone fish welfare. Um, and we are also seeing a rise of animal rights parties all over the world. However, when we look at um, activists and NGOs more specifically, they're very reluctant to actively support these uh, animal rights political parties. 
Um, and I was just wondering, what do you think? Should we as activists and NGOs more actively support and uh, advocate for these animal rights parties all over the world? Um, as, as I see, uh, for example, the fish industry is not at all reluctant to uh, support their own political representatives as, for example, the Christian parties who are extremely good at lobbying for uh, the fisheries and the livestock industry. Um, I'm not sure what the question is. Okay, hello. So the question is, should we more actively support the uh, animal rights parties that are rising now all over the world, like the Party for the Animals in the Netherlands? But you also have the French party, Party Animaliste. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes, I think we should support them. Um, um, I am, am a part of the Party of the Animals. I volunteer uh, local here in my hometown. Um, I think they have uh, very good initiatives uh, also about fisheries. Uh, we have Anja Hasekamp in the European Parliament and um, she speaks up for this, uh, these issues as well. So I think we, uh, we, uh, at least I am supporting these uh, political party, uh, but of course I can imagine that politics is uh, about maybe more for some uh, than just uh, animals and the environment. For me, it's the most important thing but I can imagine people think different about that. Um, there's someone who wants to make a point but doesn't feel comfortable um, making a point. I'm just, because it's in like different parts. <laughs> That wasn't supposed for the whole group, I think. <laughs> uh, hi, uh, I would like to ask a question regarding uh, the perception that the general public has about fishes and fishing. So basically we are seeing in most of the popular culture that fishing is presented as something like a relaxing time with the family and um, you know like uh, the, 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 the parent will take their child to fishing and that will be quality time and I think this is uh, very much embedded into the popular culture as you know like fishes they don't matter and on the other hand they, they are like a nice bonding time um, so is there something being done uh, to indicate that actually fishing is as, as bad as hunting uh, with uh, respect to the individual animal that's being killed? Yes, I think uh, fishing as a sport is comparable to hunting. Um, but in, in general, there are not many actions yet for fishes but um, I can imagine uh, you have uh, here in the Netherlands you have animal rights to, that does uh, hunt sabotage uh, they go out with uh, noise uh, where uh, where people hunt um, you could think you could think of that maybe also do something like that for fishes and but um yeah we should think about that one of the things which i may want to share is it's a thing which a friend of me used to do last summer it's like when people because i used to live at a place where uh at a kennel in the city um so people would fish there and when people would be fishing, we would be throwing stones in the water yes. so the fish would swim away. So that's maybe an option of like sabotaging, uh, like fishing as a sport. Yeah. yeah. But uh, uh, it's also uh, quite a hard job to get uh, people more sentient about fishes that they 
relate a bit more to them because, well, we don't see them very often, of course, we, uh, not in their natural habitat anyways, uh, and they don't scream and they're not cute. Uh, so uh, we... They are cute. <laughs> yes, I think too, uh, but uh, not any, not everyone is thinking that. Or sometimes they just find them pretty, like uh, you can find a car pretty. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's someone who doesn't feel comfortable in uh, speaking up. Not really questions, more like uh, some points. Um, they say, I find it really notable that so many people have pet fish and also eat them. Whereas when people have pets or other species, they generally don't eat them um, unless they're farmers. Um, but then he also makes a point that it might be a species, speciesist to classify all fish together and not all mammals. So um, people would, have, for example, have like a goldfish as a um, as a pet fish, but then eat tuna and that it might still be speciesist to think it because it's still a different species. Yes, that, that's possible, yes, because uh, uh, we have about, uh, I thought, 35,000 of uh, fish uh, species. And um, if we talk about fishes, uh, we usually also include squids and shrimps and other crustaceans. Uh, so, but they're not all the same, of course. And then another point he's making, um, when they first recorded whale song, it had a massive impact on people's perception of them. So fish apparent, apparent silence is the key blocking issue, I think. Um, do they make any kind of noise on any frequency that could be used to public public Guys, publicize their well, publicize their sentience. Um, or could yeah, their brain waves somehow be transformed into sound effects to this end? Well, I don't know about the technical part. I know they do make sounds and they can communicate with uh, with sounds, uh, but I don't know uh, how you should can transmit that in. Um, sounds for us and how we will feel about the sounds. Uh, I'm not sure how to do that, but uh, maybe we could try if someone uh, has more technical knowledge about this. There, someone raised a hand, I believe if I remember it was Ben, maybe if they want to ask yeah. their question. Is there a specific region where most of our fish is caught? I do wonder. I suppose it's the North Sea for us, but I don't actually know for sure. Well, um, I think we almost uh, catch fish everywhere we can. I, I don't think you can say uh, we do it more here and or there. We just um, also uh, follow where the fish go. Uh, uh, in the earlier days, fish there were a lot more fish near the shores, um, but uh, uh, fish go. Um, now uh, they have to go out fair, um, further and longer to find uh, the right amount and sizes of fishes. So I think that also changes uh, with the time. I also see someone is asking if the week of action for fish uh, will still happen. We will get to that later. Larissa of Animal Rebellion in the Netherlands is on the call as well. And she will get to that um, after the questions, once we get into um, the action part of the call. Uh, there's two more people who raised their hands. Um, Michael. 
Yeah, I basically want to uh, to partly answer Ben's question because most um, most countries do have an uh, exclusive economic zone, which is on top of my head 200 nautical miles from shore, and that's where they have the sole right for fishing. And uh, the Netherlands and Belgium and uh, the countries around here that fish in the North Sea, they share the North Sea with the UK. So I, I hope that uh, helps to clarify it a little bit. Yes, thank you for that. Uh, I'd like to add something to that. Uh, so the, what you just um, mentioned, that's completely true. <clears throat> you were talking about fish quota. And these fish quota can be sold to uh, are sold to um, private companies, and private companies buy these fish quota can buy these fish quota wherever, uh, wherever in the world. So what you see is that um, major fish fish corporations from the Netherlands, which are the hu huge players in in, um, in the industry, they buy fish quotas from all over the world. So their ships. Their trawlers go all over the world and deplete the um, uh, the fish from uh, other regions. And I'd like to um, add this also to so one thing that's also uh, problematic of the way um, there is fish uh, we fish at the moment is um, so one of the biggest fishing company in the world is Parley Fleet and Van der Plas. And what they did is they take their trawler to the African coast, the West, the West African coast, and they fish, they fish all the uh, fish out of the ocean, leaving none left for the local population to fish. Then they dump the fish on the local market, making the price of the fish drop and at the same time, the re fish reserves for the next few years are also completely depleted. So fishing uh, communities near the West African coast are completely economically depleted. Yes. It's, 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 um, it's, it's colonization on, uh, in the 21st century. Yes, this it's is good this, is, this is imperial. The, the fish, because the fishing the, the, the fishing regulations, it's, it's the Wild West. It, it really is. Mm -hmm. And, the, and the, uh, the Dutch uh, domination on, in this industry is the same as imperialist, uh, is, is, is really an imperialistic uh, worldview where we go to um, developing nations and deplete their resources, leaving the shit behind for our own profit. It's, yes. it's, so there's also a really big, um, besides the environmental impact that fishing has, it also destabilizes uh, the developing nations. So it's, it's a, like I said, I'm gonna say it again, it's colonization and imperialism in the 21st century. Yes, it's, it's good that you point that out. Thank you. Is there someone else with a question? I'm trying to go through the chat and summarize a little bit. Um, I think Joy risked their hands. Hey, yeah, um, do you hear me well? Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, I wanna ask a question about the, the world, fee, world fishing because um, a lot of people are actually against hunting already so can it be a strategy to to talk about um, aquatic hunting for example instead of fishing to to make people do the comparison do the link between fishing and hunting because it's actually the same thing but in the ocean actually so or in the rivers or lakes so can we try to to make that connection between land animals and my marine animals, like it's killing them, it's just the same actually. 
Um, well, the, the sound was not that good on my computer, so some words uh, were not really understandable. Um, yeah, maybe if you can use this chat if it wasn't, because it wasn't super clear for me either. I thought I also saw a question about uh, the numbers for fish stock. Mm. Um, countries uh, need to register the, the numbers, what they catch, and they are collected uh, by the Food and Agriculture Organization. This is the Department uh, of the United Nations. So that's uh, how they get numbers. Um, and um, uh, I lost the name. There is an organization that, uh, based on these numbers, uh, make regulations uh, on the fish quota, how much fish uh, can be catched. Um, Um, is there someone else with a question or can we move towards uh, the action for it? I have like 11 new messages, but I'm trying to catch up with what everyone is saying. Um, can you take a look in the chat, Leslie? Yes, yeah, I'm looking at that. Um, I think uh, Jim said, what about saying aquatic hunting instead of fishing? Well, that, that can be useful. Uh, so, so try. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Hi, can I make a question as well? Yes. Yeah, I was wondering because during this corona crisis in small cities, I know I'm not living there, but in the city where I come from, there's uh, small fisheries in the coast of Spain. And because of the tourism falling, the restaurants don't buy the fish. And there's, there's two or three cities who already canceled the fishing activities for during the quarantine and I'm guessing when they come back they will find out that there's a lot more fish than before and they'll probably try to see this as something positive for the fishing industry but I'm guessing if we can do something to uh, show the opposite and that how such, in such a short amount of time how much better the nature is becoming. So we should let it. Um, well, I think, I don't know how long the Corona crisis will take and how long it takes uh, for uh, tourists uh, get out again. Uh, of course, uh, we can think about actions to, uh, to make this known, uh, of course. Um, but it depends on how much uh, time uh, it would the corona crisis will will last, and also if that really has an effect on the population of fish. Uh, I have a direct point on this. Mm -hmm. I have a direct response. Um, so I've heard this before that um, but, well, it, which is obviously true is that the coronavirus does have um, a less negative impact on the climate as we used to because uh, the system is at, is, uh, 
is, is, is at pause. There's a pause on the system. Um, but the, the narrative, if, if we would um, promote this narrative too much, the narrative of saying, oh, we just need to stop doing shit, then we'll, we, we will be fine. That's a really dangerous narrative because what it implants in, into people's heads is, oh, it doesn't really matter. As long as we stop doing harmful things, then the, the crisis will be solved. But, and this um, triggers a sort of passiveness within people. And what we want is that people become active. We need active agents of change and not uh, promote this message of saying, oh, as long as you're passive, then the world will heal itself. No, we need active agents of change to actively heal the world. The world will not passively heal itself. I think that's a really important, uh, important thing to ex express in our narr narrative. Okay, I think it's good to take that in account when we talk about actions. Uh, maybe uh, I, I, um, if there are not too many questions anymore about pre presentation itself, uh, maybe it's almost time to switch over to Larissa to um, do an introduction on actions that we can do and discuss how to do this. Thank you for watching the talk for the World Day for the end of fishing. The open discussion will be uploaded in another video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please join us in our Animal Resistance University where you can find the link below.